malfunctions or reloads or emergency reloads. So we saw today that all we did was we moved up in our skill builders, instead of running the drills dry for movement techniques, we integrated force on target and we saw that we had a huge problem with weapon manipulation, getting those, those shots on target. Uh, the, the accuracy wasn't bad, wasn't bad, but at those distances it could be significantly improved, especially since we're trying to go slow. So, you know, that theory of how we conduct training, we do lecture, discussion, demonstration, skill builders, force on target, force on role player, force on force, scenario based training, and then a field training exercise. So, you guys did a really good job with the, the communication and getting people into the right position, so it shows you've been doing your homework and practicing. But the thing that's missing is obviously shooting targets. So it was a good experience for you guys today to kind of muddle your way through that, make some mistakes so that way you can see where you need to improve upon. So again, don't necessarily have to go out to the live range and run a bunch of weapons drills on that. Here's the, what you can do. You can, you can use a, a few UTM rounds, right? Where you fire one shot, practice emergency reloads. Or do tack reloads when they're dry. Hey, bang, bang. Tack reload, get that in there. So a lot of times what I'll do is when I'm trying to do some weapons training at home and I don't have access to the range or anything like that, I'm gonna run my weapons dry where I'm practicing tack reloads or emergency reloads where I'll stage an emergency reload. I'll lock the bolt to the rear, dump it, mag in, bolt release. So just verify that you double check your equipment that you have no ammunition, nothing there. My recommendation is if you have a UTM bolt, convert it. Uh, so if you don't, Obviously, you're going to run a live fire bolt on there, so you can have no ammo on your person when you're running those drills dry. One of the things that I like to do, the way that I work this, is I watch an action movie. I'll put an action movie on, and whenever there is a bad guy on a scene, right, that's where I will run a drill, where I'll run an emergency reload, and then get it up and see if I get it on time. Or if it's not an emergency reload type of situation, I'll practice tack reloads. So I'm wearing my kit, and I'm moving around the living room, and my wife is laughing at me because she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm just practicing because it's a rainy day or I have nobody to train with or nothing's going on. And I just decide to throw in an action movie. And you know, like the worst one is Black Hawk Down. You run Black Hawk Down, you're like, Jesus Christ, you're going through all my mags, emergency reload, emergency reload, emergency reload. Then you gotta pick them up before the next sequence starts. So there is ways to practice that stuff without having to dump rounds at the range. Lock the bolt to the rear, come up like you're gonna shoot, dump it, fresh bag in, bolt release, click, all right? And that allows you to get those muscle mechanics of getting that mag in, bolt release, and hear it go click. If the bolt doesn't go forward, the gun won't go click. So you've got to practice that where you have that bolt get released on the side. So I encourage you to try something different other than just waiting till you're at the range. Because like I said, you're never going to get enough time. What questions do you guys have? We're all so perfect. You guys, I mean, you guys did a significant improvement. I was really impressed. The was a lot better. Your tactics and your strategy was significantly better. Uh, so it, you guys, whatever you're practicing together, it's starting to come along, okay? And again, it's a process. You've got to go through lecture, discussion, demonstration, skill builder, force on target, force on role player, force on force, field, uh, scenario based field training exercise. Um, here's what I'd encourage you guys to consider. There is an event coming up September 25th called Confrontation Fireteam Ops. It just got announced. It's a full day event that goes from uh, noon to 5 p.m. here, and then from 6 p.m. till 10 p.m. over at Ben Avery. So it's a good 10 hour day. It's not a training day, it's a test and evaluation. So it's a series of interconnected missions and scenarios in which you can compete at three different levels. Uh, recruit, intermediate, or team one. All right. So in other words, you're working on problems that are related to your skill set and you're being judged based upon your skill set. So if you want to test yourself on that day, there's only 12 spots available. It's fire teams of four. Uh, so I know there's a team one fire team that's already been formed up. There's an intermediate fire team of some other guys that are forming up, uh, but there's still one more fire team that's available. So if you guys are interested, September 25th, we're running that fire team ops. So if you want to see like how you are doing compared to other guys, that's a real good day to test yourself because there's going to be some high level uh, problem solving that is just kind of like outside of the box, uh, medical problems, building clearing, low light tactics, hostage rescue, stuff like that. So it's the type of stuff we do at the Spec Op Challenge, but I've retired the Spec Op Challenge because it's not going to be run by Arizona Tactical Adventure anymore. 
but there are these one day events called the confrontation series that just give you a chance to step into scenarios. They could be force on target, force on role play, or force on force, depending on what skill level you're going for. And then you get a straight up evaluation score. So that way, if you go through it and you do fire team ops again, you can see what kind of score you scored last time, see if you improve. So a lot of times when we do this on the spec op challenge, guys set these records that they're always trying to beat. So this is gonna be a nice, easy way of testing people on a regular basis to see whether they're improving or not improving. What's the cost for that? It's $150 if you register before September 1st per person. So it's a full day event. So it's a 10 hour event. So it's roughly three, like three, three events that are running. Yeah. That's reasonable. Yeah. And there are going to be prizes and giveaways and stuff like that that are going to be available to the teams if they meet certain standards. So they're not competing against each other directly because everybody's competing at their own skill level. So if you can accomplish the missions, you get a prize. If you can't accomplish it, you don't win the objective prize. So there's going to be like giveaways. Uh, I think you will usually use ball caps uh, and shamogs or gloves or other stuff like that for people to go through it. But then we put something that's like a little better if you're able to complete it with the best score. Cool.